Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're gonna revisit Sheikh Hamza Yusuf with his video, The Four Madabs in Islam. As I said previously, opinions on Sheikh Hamza Yusuf are torn. Some people believe that he is absolutely accurate and a beautiful scholar. Others, on the other hand, believe that he is misguided. Nevertheless, up until now, the videos that I reviewed were full of value and I appreciated them. So with no further ado, let's have a look. This is a country where tradition has been maintained. It's, this, it's, it's broken down in many places. People are very confused. But if you come to Turkey, there's much less confusion about what religion is. Turkey. And the okay. reason for that is that they protected the... Turkey is pretty secular and liberal after all. They had a huge communist revolution, but after that Islam came back. Nevertheless, it is a modern day country bordering the Balkans on the edge of Europe. And that area in general is more traditional than the West. That is for sure. This tradition, their ulama did not allow these alien forces to come in and divide and conquer them. Because Allah says, Wala tafarraqu. We forget that it's a prohibition to become sectarian. In the Quran, it's a prohibition. There's nahi an tafarruq. Allah says, wala tafarruqu. How did the Muslims do that? They had no synods. They had no magisterium. They had no councils. How did they do that? If you look at, uh, if you look at the Jews, the Jews have certain rabbinical councils that meet together and decide what's orthodoxy and what's not. If you look at the Christians, they had councils. They exactly. had the Council of Nicaea, the Council yeah. of Chaldea. They had the Council of Alexandria. They had all these different councils. They come together and they meet and their bishops discuss what's going to be doctrine. And they hash it out. The bishops discuss what the creed will be in the Islamic theology. This would be called Akida, and this is a complex topic in Islam. It is not as linear as it is within Christianity. So let's hear what he has to say. And then they come to certain agreements, and some of them disagree. They become heretics yes. or heterodoxic. Heterodox. Right? Yeah. And that's how the religion. The Muslims had none of that. There's no councils. Yeah. There's no synods. Sure. There's no magisterium. How did they come to these agreements? This is a miracle of Islam. The providential hand that is taking care of this religion is so evident to anybody that's willing to openly look at it. How did they agree that there were, uh, the Sunni community agree there are four basic madhab? How did they agree to that? Despite the fact we had dozens of madhabs. What happened to Laith? Really, very where's Sufyan really al These were great fuqaha, but their ways died out. Where's Imam al -Zai? Where's Abu Dawud al-Zahiri? Why Malik, Abu Hanifa, Shafi'i, and, uh, and Ahmad? Why these four? The Inayah ilahiyya. These are the people that Allah, and it's not that the others were less than them, but for whatever hikmah, Allah chose these four to be the canonical schools of the Sunni tradition and the Ja'fari mm -hmm. and, the, and the Shia tradition. Th this is a miracle of Islam. To do this and to have them accept each other. The fact that they had four mihrab in the Kaaba is a miracle of Islam. That they weren't fighting each other. And, and if, the, if the Maliki yeah. was late for his Dhuhr uh, prayer, he would... Uh... It's really, really interesting. I'm trying to wrap my head around this whilst listening to this video. As I said previously, every single time I react to videos, I watch them for the very first time. So this is the first time that I hear this. And I'm genuinely extremely impressed by this description. Because it is true. I come from an Orthodox Christian perspective. And yes, we had the Council of Nicaea and many other councils to follow. There the church fathers discussed. And the people that disagreed were the heretics. He's absolutely correct there. This is how those rulings have been established. This is how the creeds have been established. But in Islam, it is absolutely different. It is actually mind-boggling. I have to laugh out loud here just thinking about it, that this must be some sort of divine intervention, or at least this is how it is displayed here, that people simply came up with certain doctrines, certain schools of thought, and they became the dominant school of 
thought without any counsel. Really think about this. This is extremely fascinating. I'm sorry, if the Shafi'i wow. was late for the Dhuhr prayer, he would pray with the Malikis. If the Shafi'i, the Hanafi, and the Hanbali were late for their uh, hmm. Asr prayer, they would pray with the Hanafis. If they were late for their Fajr prayer, they would pray with the Hanafis. And this, this wasn't because they were sectarian. They had one mihrab in Medina. People say, oh look, they got to a point, there was so much sectarianism, they had four madhab. No, it was pre-microphone. They, you know, Kaaba is a big place. They didn't, there, there, there was space for everybody. And that was the Sa'at al-Sudur. They had big breasts. And they let everybody uh, pray there. Each madhab was honored. The Hanafi obviously got the biggest one because the majority were Hanafi. And the Shafi'i at one point also very big. The Maliki small and then the Hanbali was very small because there were very few Hanbalis. But each was honored. And then in the Aqidah, you look at the Aqidah schools that were transmitted. The, the lots of debates. How did they agree on these things? Undeniably, there were periods of fitnah and, and we went through uh, similar problems that other religions have had. But how did they arrive to these agreed upon things? This yeah, is how? not to deny that there are you. people, dissenters. There, there are. And they, if, they were, if they were of a caliber that the other ulama recognized their right to dissent, they would acknowledge it. But if they were heretics, they would call it what it was. Right? Heraseya is a Greek word, zandaka is used in Arabic, but harasaya in Greek means to choose for yourself. A heresy is where you pick and choose your religion. Mm, makes you sense. don't accept what's transmitted, what's agreed Cherry upon. picking. And, and so in the Aqidah, this, this is what they came. They, they came to, to, to the, the, the Ash'ari, the Maturidi. This, uh, the Ottoman Dawla was Maturidi. The Muhammad al-Fatih, he came into this city and conquered this city. The Prophet praised him. He said, Ni'm al-Amir. He said, Ni'm al-Jaysh wa Ni'm al-Amir. Ni'm al-Amiru amiruhum wa Ni'm al-Jaysh jayshuhum. What a blessed Amir is their Amir and what a blessed army is their army. He was, by consensus, Hanafi, Maturidi, and Naqshbandi. So the Prophet was praising a Hanafi, Maturidi, Naqshbandi. And people say, Bid'ah, Mubtada. Astaghfirullah. Would the Prophet praise a Mubtada? He would never praise a Mubtada. And yet we know he praised the conqueror of this city. He said, Ni'm al Amir. Ni'ma is the way the Arabs say the best. That's the best Amir, their Amir. And he would never praise worldly things, not like uh, he was a great general, which he was. No, he was praising his Iman. He was praising his Aqidah. He was praising his practice because he was Imamun Adil and Sab'atun Yil. But what is the Aqidah? I'm really wondering here because the Aqidah is the creed. If we look at the Council of Nicaea, we can see a full description of the creed, what it means to be an Orthodox Christian. However, what would be the Aqidah within those schools? I really want to know. Please let me know in the comment section so I can find this out. <laughs> Seven are, are given the shade of Allah on the day of judgment when there's no shade except Allah's shade. The first, the first, Imamun Adil, a just ruler. That's how high their maqam is. A high ruler. The dhikr of the, the umara is Adil. That's their dhikr, to practice justice. They don't have to do a lot of subha, even though he did, or do a lot of tilawa, even though he did. They don't have to do any of that. If they're just, that's their dhikr. And they reach these high maqams. So that was just. who he praised. So this transmission, and then the, the third area, this is Iman, Islam, and Ihsan. How did mm. they agree on the way of Imam al-Junaid? Imam al-Junaid is Imam by consensus. Imam al-Ta'ifatayn. No Sunni can yata'anu fi... Dr. Omar, you're here. He's a much greater scholar than I am. You know, I'm astaghfirullah, not even put my name under scholarship, but student of knowledge. But Dr. Omar, Imam al-Junaid, anybody disagree on him from the Sunni tradition? Do you know? Nobody. Ibn Taymiyyah praises him, everybody praises him. He's Imam al-Ta'ifatayn. He was a great scholar, 
in, in but that is interesting at the same time contradictory no he just said that there is a certain person that has been praised by ibn taymiyyah but now the sunnis do not praise him so what is going on there if we're talking about divine intervention we're talking about the right path of islam revealed by god why did then ibn taymiyyah say good things about this person but the sunnis nowadays say bad things in the, in, 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 I don't in, in his madhab of thawri he was a great scholar and he was a great uh, sufi and his Tasawwuf spread because one of his students was the single most important narrator of Abu Dawood's uh, Musnad. So when, when Abu Dawood, the Sunan of Abu Dawood, when he went to Mecca and began transmitting the hadith, he taught Imam Junaid's uh, teaching there and it spread all over the world. So in Morocco, the little children, they learned fi aqtara sha'ari wa fi qimarik wa fi tariqat al Junaid al sadiq And that's what they all learned. The, okay. the aqid of Imam al-Ash'ari, the fiqh of Imam Malik, and the, the way of Imam al-Junaid. And this was Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. And people say, you know, what, what, where is that? Where's tasawwuf in Islam? Where's the, the word? The, it's a technical term. It's a technical term. Just like mantiq, kalam, fiqh. Fiqh is a technical term. People forget that. All the hadith in which the Prophet uses fiqh, he did not mean jurisprudence. He meant understanding. مَنْ يُرِيدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرٍ يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ He gives them an understanding of the religion. They mm -hmm. use it later and the books of fiqh always begin with that hadith because it's تَفَاؤُلًا تَبَرُّكًا But the original meaning of that, you look in the commentaries of hadith, it meant يُفَهِّمُهُ فِي الدِّينِ And the Sahaba knew that رُبَّ حَامِرِي فِقْهٍ لَيْسَ بِفَقِي Sometimes somebody who walks around with a lot of information in his head isn't a faqi. They have all the outward, uh, what Imam al Ghazali calls a all right guys and this is it for today's video it cuts off here extremely interesting but at the same time i'm left with more question at the beginning of the video as you saw it was pretty mind blown because it was interesting to me that there are no councils within islam that there is no orthodox perception of what a creed is this was really fascinating to me and pointed towards divine intervention so to speak but then ultimately when he said that the sunnis disagree even with ibn taymiyyah on certain subjects this was extremely strange to me because it disproves the divine intervention argumentation here. Please let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this presentation of Sheikh Hamza Yusuf here and moreover, as I said previously, what the Akida is in those certain schools. Does the Akida differ as well? Is the creed the same throughout Sunni Islam? Is it differing within those schools, Hanafi, Maliki and whatnot? Please let me know in the comment section because this video, as I said, left me with more questions. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.